Hi there, my name is Per Konradi. I'm a senior anesthesiology consultant practicing in Stockholm, Sweden. Today we will show you how to insert the BIP CVC from back to guard in the internal juggler vein on the right hand side. First, we need a sterile table with a CVC insertion bundle kit and of course the CVC from back to guard. It is shown that usage of ultrasound during CVC insertion significantly lowers the risk of pneumothorax and arterial puncture. So it is highly recommended to use ultrasound during CVC insertion. Of course, we also need a patient who ideally should be clean, placed on a clean bed with a 15 to 30 degree Trendelenburg position uh, in order to minimize the risk of air embolism and maximize the distension of the vein. The face should be slightly turned to the left. If ultrasound isn't available, use the landmark technique, identifying jugulum, the clavicle, the sternocleidomastoid muscle with its two bellies forming a triangle. Insert the needle at the top of this triangle at the level of the thyroid cartilage. Keep your left hand fingers on the carotid pulse and insert the needle in a 45 degree angle, slightly pointing laterally towards the ipsilateral nipple. We start with a quick look with the ultrasound in order to make sure that the site is ideal. This is to prevent not needing to redo all preparations in case the vein is occluded for whatever reason. On the ultrasound screen, we identify structures such as the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the carotid artery and the compressible internal jugular vein. As you can see, I'm now sterile and it's time to clean the patient. I use chlorhexidine antiseptic fluid and I clean a big area in case we need to proceed to the subclavian site. After the chlorhexidine has dried out, and this is very important, it's time to cover the patient with sterile draping. As you can see, we have now put all the CVC items on the sterile table. First of all, we have the central venous catheter. Notice the length marks on the catheter, and this is the 16 centimeter one. We have a guide wire with length marks. Make sure it easily slides through the dispenser and also retracts properly. We have a dilator. A scalpel, only to be used if necessary. We have suture wings, syringes with normal saline. We have the uh, 18 gauge needle for the guide wire to slide through. A chlorhexidine patch and local anesthesia. And three-way lure lock extensions. First of all, I check the CVC by connecting it to a three-way lure lock extension and fill them all with normal saline. Note that the lumen with brown color should be left open at this stage since it will be used for guide wire withdrawal later on. To minimize the pressure during the procedure of flushing, use the 10 milliliter syringe because the pressure should never exceed 40 psi. So I start with uh, giving, the, giving the patient some local anesthesia for the skin. I give that a few moments for the uh, anesthetic to have full effect. And then I proceed with the 18 gauge needle and start the procedure. When you use ultrasound during a sterile procedure, make sure you cover the probe with a sterile sleeve. Get a good picture on the ultrasound screen. Identify the vein and start the venous puncture. So, locate the vein, insert the needle and aspirate. Ensure that a good flow of venous blood is established. Keep the syringe attached to the needle. Be aware of the anatomy so you don't damage the lungs or nerves. Keep a steady grip on the needle so its tip does not move out of the vein and carefully remove the syringe. A pulsatile flow exiting the introducer needle usually indicates an unintentional arterial puncture. If that happens, Remove the syringe and apply pressure to the insertion site in order to prevent the risk of a large hematoma. Retract the guide wire into the dispenser to straighten its tip. Gently insert the tip through the needle into the vessel. 
If resistance to the advancement of the guide wire is encountered, withdraw it, twist it slightly, and gently try to reintroduce it. Advance the guide wire to the required depth. Maintain a firm grip on the guide wire at all times to ensure it does not get drawn into the patient. To avoid damaging the wire, do not withdraw the guide wire against the needle bevel. Advancement of the guide wire too far into the right ventricle of the heart may cause arrhythmias. This is easily detected with ECG, hence it is recommended to use ECG monitoring. The Y-valve needle is designed to prevent backflow of blood during guide wire insertion and to shorten the procedure by one step. Attach the syringe to the straight-through connector on the Y-valve needle. Follow the same steps as with the straight needle. Then attach the dispenser tip to the side connector of the needle and advance the guide wire into the vein. The Rollerson syringe is also designed to prevent backflow of blood during guide wire insertion and to shorten the procedure. It is used with a straight needle and the guide wire is advanced through the rear end of the syringe plunger. After the guide wire has reached the desired depth, remove the guide wire dispenser. Then remove the needle while keeping the guide wire in place. If needed, insert the vessel dilator over the guide wire into the blood vessel to enlarge the puncture site. As I mentioned before, there is a risk of air embolism, especially after having used the dilator. Always make sure to apply light pressure on the puncture site. If it is difficult to penetrate the skin with the dilator alone, use the scalpel, then remove the vessel dilator. Thread the tip of the catheter over the guide wire. A sufficient length of the guide wire must remain exposed at the brown hub of the catheter to allow a firm grip. Hold the catheter near the skin and advance the catheter into the vein with a slight twisting motion, using the centimeter marks on the catheter as positioning reference points. Advance the catheter to the final indwelling position. From the internal jugular vein on the right-hand side, it is approximately 15 centimeters to the target position of the catheter tip. Hold the catheter at the desired depth and remove the guide wire. If resistance is encountered when attempting to remove the guide wire after catheter placement, withdraw the catheter two or three centimeters and attempt to remove the guide wire. Applying undue force during guide wire withdrawal increases the potential for guide wire or catheter breakage. If resistance is encountered again, remove the guide wire and catheter simultaneously. To avoid infections, restart the procedure with a new sterile catheter. Check the lumen placement by attaching a syringe to each lumen extension and aspirate until a free flow of blood is observed. Connect all lumen extensions to appropriate lower lock lines as required. Three-way stopcocks may be used, but are not included in the BIP CVC kit. Unused ports may be locked with injection caps, following standard hospital routines. Slide clamps are provided to prevent blood flow through each lumen if separate stopcocks are not used. Secure the catheter position by suturing the integral suture hub to the skin. In case you use a longer catheter, clamp a suture wing and a clamp fastener over the catheter to ensure another two suture points. After the procedure, I cover the site with a chlorhexidine patch to minimize the risk of infection. Consider a chest x-ray for confirming catheter tip position. The tip should ideally be found in the proximal part of the superior vena cava. The catheter depth should be noted in the patient's records in case of future catheter displacement. A catheter that has slightly changed position and slipped out, despite the sutures, should never be inserted back into its original position, as this increases the risk of infection. Fixate a new position or exchange the catheter in a sterile procedure. The access site needs to be checked regularly and the dressing should be changed with antiseptic technique according to local protocols, but at least every sixth day. There should also be routinely checkups on flow rate, sutures, correct position, and secure lure lock connections. Use normal saline to flush all lumen on a regular basis. The catheter has to be withdrawn if there is any suspicion of catheter-related infection, signs of infection at the puncture site, or if the catheter function is impaired. If no complications, 
The BIP CVC is approved for 30 days.